All right, let's look at a couple of examples of angular momentum. So the first one is, let's go back to this picture that we just had looking at the work kinetic energy theorem. So again, we know these rod pieces, which all are equal length d, where d in this case is going to be 12 centimeters, are massless. And then we have these three identical masses. Those three identical masses all have mass of 23 grams. And the whole system is going to be rotating with an angular velocity of 0.85 radians per second. And what I want to know is, what's the angular momentum of this entire system? Well, we already know based off of the last time we looked at that problem that the total uh, angular momentum or moment of inertia of the system is going to be equal to like 14 times the mass times that d squared. So this is the moment of inertia about that particular pivot point. Well, this whole system together constitutes a rigid body. So again, here's my rod rotating, where again I have three masses of equal distance across here. So as this whole thing is rotating, it's rotating together as one object. And since this thing doesn't deform as it rotates, this is what we call a rigid body. So in this case, we know is that the magnitude of the angular momentum is simply the moment of inertia about that particular pivot point times then the angular velocity. So in this case, we know that this is going to be the same thing then as 14 times the mass times the distance squared times that instantaneous angular velocity, which in this case is 0.85 radians per second. So plug in my numbers, what I find in this case then is that this works out to be about 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms meters squared per second squared. So this is, <coughs> oops, sorry, wrong spot. So 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms meters squared per second squared. So this is the angular momentum of the entire system. Good, so let's look at one more example. This time is going to be a collision. And let's see, how do we deal with collisions using <coughs> pardon me, conservation of angular momentum? So let's say I have a ruler. So here's my ruler, which is one meter long. And this thing is going to be pivoted about the center point. So here is my rod pivoted at the center point. Okay, so this is my pivot point. So this thing has one meter in length. So let's call that L is equal to one meter. Uh, and it has a mass, let's call that capital M, which is equal to 0 0.3 kilograms. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is halfway down the halfway section here. So this distance here, so this is going to be L over four. We're going to take a bullet from a gun shoot it in this direction, where the initial velocity of the bullet is moving in this direction. The initial is 250 meters per second, where the mass of the bullet, let's call that little m sub b, is equal to 3 grams, is then going to pierce through the rod. Afterward, it's going to go through the center of that center, or the halfway point, come out the other side with exactly the same amount of mass, but now moving with a slower velocity, which is equal to 160 meters per second. Now, when this happens, what's going to happen is what? So the rod is here, pivoted at the center. It's going to blast through here, and then it's going to start to rotate. Okay? So what I want to know then is, what's the angular velocity of the rod? So how fast is this rod then going to rotate? about this center pivot point. So this is what we want to know. So how fast is this thing actually going to rotate? Good. Now, first things first. Since the bullet actually passes through the object, okay, so again, this thing's coming in this way and does that, this is not going to be an inelastic, or an elastic collision, it will be an inelastic collision. It's not perfectly inelastic because it doesn't stick. Now, in that case, would be if I took putty and I had the putty hit, and then the whole system rotates together. But in this case, since it hits and passes through, this whole system then has to be an inelastic collision because energy is not going to be conserved. Okay? Energy is going to be lost due to the fact that I have to bust a hole through, through this object. So, in this case, that makes it easier because now we don't have energy conserved, we only have 
momentum conservation, or angular momentum conservation. So good. So in this case, what we know is that well, the initial angular momentum must be equal to the final angular momentum. Now, <clears throat> let's look at each one. So initially, the only thing which is moving is going to be this bullet. Right? So my initial picture is simply this guy is not moving. This guy is moving. But what he's going to be moving relative to is this pivot point. So the R vector is going to point in this direction. Momentum vector then will point in this direction. So there is going to be an angular momentum. So here, this is only going to be the angular momentum then of the point. Afterward, what's going to happen then is the rod is going to rotate, but the bullet is going to keep moving. So there's going to be a new R vector, which points from here to here, with a new momentum vector. So this is going to be P final. This is going to be R final, where this is R initial, and then this is P initial. So this guy is rotating as a rigid body. So this is going to be the angular momentum of the rod as a rigid body, plus then the final angular momentum of the bullet. So we call this the initial angular momentum of the bullet. That's going to be the final angular momentum of the bullet. Now, things to pay attention to here. So how do I define the angular momentum? So initially, the bullet is moving in like this. But notice that if I take the bullet here, I have an R vector which points from here to here. The momentum points this way, which means that what I care about is if this guy's this way and this guy's that way, I care about this angle here. That's the angle in between. But as the bullet starts moving in, what's happening is this R vector is changing orientation, which means the angle is changing. But the R vector is actually getting shorter as well. So the question is, where do I actually take this angular momentum from? Right? Because basically, this R vector is not a fixed vector. It's getting shorter. The orientation is changing, which means that this angle here is also changing. So how do I actually define this thing? Well, let's make an assumption. So the assumption is we're going to fire this bullet relatively close to the rod, which basically means that what? even though there is an exterior torque, and that exterior torque is going to be gravity, because gravity is going to want to pull it down. So this thing's actually going to do that. But if I fire the bullet close enough to the rod, what happens in that case then is even though there's an exterior torque, it's not going to have enough time to really pull it down. So I can pretty much pretend that gravity does not exist. Which means that I can pretend that instead of the bullet being shot out here, it's actually going to be very, very close to here. And if I assume that this is a thin rod, which means instead of looking at it this way, I'm looking at it more this way, and even actually thinner than this, <coughs> then what I can say then is that the bullet starts initially straight down from that pivot point, meaning that I'm actually going to draw my bullet here. So in this case, my R vector is going to be straight down. This is my R initial. And my initial momentum is going to be in this direction, which means that the angle between the two is simply going to be 90 degrees. All right. Now, once the bullet then leaves and now comes out the other side, we're going to do exactly the same thing. So what's happening now is that there's the final momentum in this direction, but the R direction still stays the same. And the angle between the two is still simply 90 degrees. Now, since the angle is 90 degrees, what well, that means is the sine of 90 is equal to 0. So here and here, where we get that sine of 90 degrees, we simply are just going to rewrite it as 1. So all this means then is that what? Well, the left-hand side is going to become r, where r in this case is going to be l over 4, right? which is this distance from here to here, times the momentum of the bullet initially, which is going to be the mass of the bullet times the initial velocity is then equal to the moment of inertia of the rod times the angle of velocity plus the distance we are, again, away from the pivot point to where the bullet is, which again is L over 4, times the mass of the bullet times the final velocity, where that final velocity is different from that initial velocity. Now, <clears throat> again, recall that angular momentum is a vector. So in this case, what I'm assuming is that as this thing hits, it passes through and they're both going to rotate in the same direction. Now, that would be different, though. I would have a different expression if this guy hit and bounced away, meaning if this guy hit and moved back in this direction, what happened then is that this one would have to become a negative sign because it's actually moving in the opposite direction. So again, if it's initially moving this way, hits, this guy starts to rotate here, but this one bounces back, then they're rotating in the different directions, 
which means then that this would become a negative sign instead of a positive sign. Also notice that if they hit and stuck together, for example, if this was clay, so if we came in and did that, what happened in that case then is this term would no longer be here, but what would happen is that this would become the total moment of inertia. So in that case, it would be the moment of inertia of the rod plus the moment of inertia of the putty being stuck to it, just like in that previous problem where the total moment of inertia was simply the moment of inertia of all three of those masses added together. So in this case, it would be the moment of inertia of the rod plus the moment of inertia of the putty if they stick together. Good. So in this case, since we're looking for the angular velocity of a rod, simply going to subtract this term over here and then divide by the moment of inertia. So let's do that. So this is going to give me an L over 4 times m times then the initial velocity minus the final velocity all divided by the moment of inertia of the rod is equal to the angular velocity. Now here, the rod is being rotated about the center point, which means that the moment of inertia of the rod is equal to the moment of inertia of the center of mass, which is equal to one-third the mass of the rod times the length of the rod squared. So let's plug that in here. So this finally gives me then that the angular velocity is equal to, so this is going to be what, Lm, v initial minus v final, divided by 4, uh, times then m times l squared divided by 3. Uh, da, 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 da. Good. So this is the mass of the bullet, this is the mass of the rod, this l is going to cancel one of those, and then this 3 is going to move to the top, so finally this becomes 3 fourths, uh, the mass of the bullet divided by the mass of the rod, all times the initial velocity minus the final velocity. Well, look at my numbers. What I get in this case then is that this works out to be about 43.2 radians per second. So this is then the final angular velocity of the rod. So again, modifications of this are, again, this guy comes in, hits, bounces off. So in that case, the only difference here is that this would become a negative sign because it's moving in the opposite direction. So that's an opposite angle of momentum. Or if this guy came in, stuck, and then rotated together, in that case, this would no longer be the moment of inertia of the rod, but it would be the total moment of inertia. So basically, this term would be absorbed into this term. Uh, worst case scenario, this thing would hit, and it would bounce away such that the energy would be conserved. So in that case, then, you would also have to consider conservation of angular momentum, or sorry, angular kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy. <laughs> so in that case, you would have conservation of angular momentum and conservation of angular velocity or conservation of angular or rotational kinetic energy. Um, so in that case, you would have two equations with two unknowns, so I could ask you more quantities to find, but uh, that'd be kind of a worst case type scenario. But 